After starting this module, you shall be able to first evaluate gains from trade, second measure the foreign trade multiplier, third evaluate terms of trade. Gains from trade. After having understood comparative cost advantage and the need for specialization in international trade, we now wish to examine the case of gains from trade. In the above section, we have seen how India, although is more efficient in the production of both radios and fans, still India possesses a comparative advantage in the production of radios as opposed to fans. Similarly, although Bangladesh is less efficient in the production of both radios and fans, it possesses a comparative advantage in the production of fans. So, this points towards the need for international specialization in production. Therefore, India should specialize in the production of radios and Bangladesh in production of fans. This also tells us why do countries trade. If international specialization takes place, then each country is concentrating on the production of one commodity, but is desirous of other commodity. Similarly, the trading partner, the other country, Bangladesh in this case, specializes in the production of other commodity, fans, but is desirous of having first commodity, radios. This determines the need for trade. When India is better off in the production of both goods, radios and fans. Why should India want to trade? The answer is that India needs to specialize in the production of that commodity, radios in which it has a comparative advantage. It would give up the production of a part of the other commodity, fans. However, since the other commodity fans is consumed domestically, India would have to import that commodity fans with its trading partner Bangladesh. A similar situation would arise for the trading partner Bangladesh who will specialize in the production of the other commodity fans. This results in two things. First, basis for trade. Second, international specialization of production. Thus, we can say that the justification for trade comes from the possibility of gains from trade. Let us take an example to illustrate gains from specialization and trade. As long as relative cost of two goods, radio and fan differ between India and Bangladesh, gains from trade will be possible. In this illustration, India can produce one unit of radio and one unit of fan with labor cost measured in hours which is 80 hours and 100 hours respectively for radio and fan which is less than the cost of production of Bangladesh for both the goods as Bangladesh uses 120 and 100 labor hours for the production of one unit of each good. Therefore, India has an absolute advantage over the production of both the goods radio and fan as the same has been demonstrated in table 1. To understand and analyze the concept of gains from trade, we use the concept of opportunity cost. Opportunity cost of production of one commodity X is the amount of another commodity Y which has to be given up to produce an additional unit of good X. We have to find out the opportunity cost of production of radio and fan in India and Bangladesh. It needs 80 labor hours to produce one unit of radio in India. However, in India, a fan can be produced with 90 labor hours. 90 labor hours produces one unit of fan. One labor hour produces one upon 90 unit of fan. 80 hours of labor produces 80 upon 90 unit of fan. With 80 labor hours, one can produce 8 upon 9th unit of fan. From the table second, it is clear that the opportunity cost production of radio is less in India than the opportunity cost of production of radio in Bangladesh. Whereas the opportunity cost of production of fan is lower in Bangladesh as compared to India. Thus, 
India has the comparative advantage in the production of radio and Bangladesh has comparative advantage in the production of fan. In order to explain the gains arising from trade, we will take up following three different propositions. Proposition 1. If country A India gains and country B Bangladesh is not worse off. Proposition 2. If country B Bangladesh gains, country A India is not worse off. Proposition 3. If country A India gains as well as country B Bangladesh also gains. Note, if one country is better off and the other is not worse off, then there are gains from trade. Proposition 1. Here we fix the terms of trade arbitrarily to show that country A India gains and country B Bangladesh is not worse off. Suppose the terms of trade are fixed such that Bangladesh exports 12 units of fans and imports 10 units of radios. In this case, the entire gain will accrue to India. This is shown in the table third. Proposition second. Here, we will fix the terms of trade arbitrarily such that country B, Bangladesh gains, country A, India is not worse off. Suppose, terms of trade are fixed such that India exports 9 units of radios and imports 8 units of fans. In this case, the entire gain will accrue to Bangladesh. This proposition is illustrated in the following table fourth. Proposition third. Here, we will fix the terms of trade arbitrarily such that country A, India gains as well as country B, Bangladesh also gains. Suppose, both India and Bangladesh agree for one to one. Trade, that is, India exports one unit of radio and exports one unit of fans. Whereas, Bangladesh do the same exports one unit of fan and import one unit of radio. This is clearly illustrated in table fifth. We shall now discuss the foreign trade multiplier. Multiplier constitutes an important edifice of Keynesian theory of employment and income determination. There exist various types of multiplier in macroeconomics. They include investment multiplier, government expenditure multiplier, tax multiplier, transfer payment multiplier, etc. All these multipliers result in change in national income arising out of change in different entities like investment, government expenditure, tax and transfer payment. However, these multipliers relate to a closed economy, which does not conduct any economic transactions with the rest of the world. Once this assumption is dropped, national income will change when export changes. This leads to the concept of foreign trade multiplier. The equation for foreign trade multiplier is Kf is equal to 1 upon MPS plus MPM where MPS is marginal propensity to save S upon Y and MPC is marginal propensity to import M upon Y. Therefore, the smaller the MPS and MPC the larger will be the value of foreign trade multiplier and vice versa. Hence, foreign trade multiplier is Kf is equal to 1 upon S plus M. It is thus evident from the above equation that smaller the leakages that is smaller the MPS and MPM the greater the foreign trade multiplier and vice versa. Foreign trade multiplier may be defined as the amount by which national income of a nation will be raised by a unit increase in domestic exports. It is based on a fundamental assumption which is the basis of operation of varied types of multiplier as mentioned above. The assumption relates to existence of unemployed resources in the economy. The reason is well understood. For additional income generation, production must expand. Such an expansion is made possible by two factors, one relating to demand while the other relates to supply. First, there needs to be a source of additional demand for output. It does not matter which leads to rise in demand. It may be rise in investment, rise in government expenditure, fall in tax and rise in transfer payment made by government. 
while any one among them provides the additional demand for output they lead to a rise in output and income in so far as unemployed resources are available in the economy it just needs to be added that if the source of rise in demand does not relate a foreign currency in the form of export we have a new concept of foreign trade multiplier which like other multiplier changes income but unlike the rest relate to a phenomena which does not emanate from the domestic economy we need to be aware of all the assumptions of the concept of foreign trade multiplier before an explanation of the process leading to change in national income due to change in export assumptions of foreign trade multiplier existence of unemployment of resources in the economy needs to be assumed if this assumption is not fulfilled it will not raise income consequent to a rise in export price will rise instead of output and income second one needs to assume an open economy where there are economic transactions with the rest of the world third we are assuming a small economy the significance of the assumption must be understood in the discussion of investment multiplier investment is assumed to be autonomous that is it is assumed to be independent of national income in order to simplify the analysis of foreign trade multiplier one needs to make a similar assumption about exports however this has a very significant implication it needs to be remembered that exports of the one country are imports of the trading partner which depends on its national income now there need not be appreciable increase in income of the other country which is exporting from the country in which production for such export is taking place for this to happen the concerned country need to be small so that changes in the national economy need not produce a large impact on the national income of its trading partner the assumption of a small domestic economy will ensure this fourth we are keeping investment government expenditure tax and transfer payment to be constant so that change in national income may be explicitly linked to change in export let us understand this concept with the help of this illustration suppose s savings is equal to 0.3 and m imports is equal to 0.2 then kf is equal to 1 upon 0.3 plus 0.2 is equal to 1 upon 0.5 which is equal to 2 that is an increase in export income of rupees 100 crore will lead to an increase in national income of rupees 200 crore when kf is equal to 2 the process of foreign trade multiplier can be understood in the table shown let us look into the diagrammatic illustration in the figure given national income has been shown on x axis and savings investments exports and imports have been shown on y axis the horizontal line marked kx represents exports the savings and imports function are represented by a line with a positive slope marked s plus m Initially the economy is in equilibrium at OY level of income where savings plus imports are in balance with exports at point E now let us assume that there is an autonomous increase in exports so that the export function is shifted from kx to kx1 this increase in exports causes an injection of income of the exporting country to rise by more than the amount of new income from exports because people spend most of their additional income on domestic goods and services only part of the additional income will leak out by way of savings and imports suppose that the autonomous increase in exports amount to rupees 100 crore and the income will be rupees 200 crore because s plus m is equal to 0.5 and value of kf is equal to 2 it becomes clear from the figure 1 that new equilibrium is established at oy1 level of income where savings plus imports are in balance with new level exports 
clearly depicts the multiplier effect of the autonomous increase in exports because delta y is greater than delta x. How large the expansionary effect on national income will be from a given increase in exports depends on the slope of the savings plus import schedule. This slope obviously depends on the marginal propensities to save and import. The smaller the sum of these propensities, the smaller will be the slope of the schedule and the larger the expansionary effect of an increase in exports on national income and vice versa. Next is leakages and injections. Leakages or withdrawals in an economy consist of spending by households which does not flow back into the domestic firms. On the other hand, injections in an economy consist of spending by households which flows back to the economy. In a very simple economy without any government intervention, consumption of domestic goods constitute the injection while saving constitutes leakages. If government is introduced, we have one more factor each for injection and withdrawal. They are tax and transfer payment respectively. Once the economy is open, consumption need not relate to domestic goods alone. And demand for goods need not emanate from where they are produced. In such a case, export constitutes the injection and, and conversely imports constitute withdrawal. This has a significant policy implication. Unless production is carried out in the economy pulled by stable domestic demand, the process of income generation may be very unstable because export demand need not be stable. However, production may be mostly geared for domestic market only if the economy is large and capable of producing huge domestic demand. But this advantage does not exist for a small economy. That was why they had to pursue the strategy of export-led growth. Let us now discuss the terms of trade. Different sectors in an economy trade with each other. For example, while agriculture sells wheat to industrial sector, industrial sector in turn sells tractor to agriculture. Both sectors pay a price for the goods they buy from each other. But the producers belonging to a sector are not per as interested in the price they get for their products. Even when they get a high price for their product, the product they want to buy may be even costlier. What actually they are interested is what is the rate at which they can convert what they produce into what they want. For example, what is the quantity of the good they got in exchange for the unit of good they sold for each unit of product. This brings us to the concept of terms of trade between the two sectors which measures the rate of exchange of one good or service for another when two sectors trade with each other. Terms of trade so defined refer to terms of trade between two sectors of the same economy. In the current context, we need to define the concept in an international context in which two sectors do not belong to the same economy but different economies. For example, we may think of agriculture sector in Indonesia is exporting rice to Germany and importing machines from Germany. In the change context, the basic concept remains the same and terms of trade for Indonesia implies the quantity of machines that can import for per unit of rice exported to Germany. Similarly, one can define the terms of trade for Germany. Clearly, terms of trade for Indonesia and Germany are inversely related. If Indonesia can get a larger number of units of machine for each unit of rice sold to Germany, terms of trade will favor Indonesia at the cost of Germany and vice versa. In the literature, two measures exist for calculating terms of trade. We start with the first measure, net barter terms of trade. The ratio between the prices of exports and imports is called the net barter terms of trade. It is also called the commodity terms of trade. Net barter terms of trade, Px upon Pm 
PX and PM refer to export price index and import price respectively. If export prices are rising faster than import prices, the terms of trade index will rise and it is said that the terms of trade become favorable to the country. This means that fewer exports have to be given up in exchange for a given volume of imports. On the other hand, if import prices rise faster than export prices, the terms of trade have deteriorated. A greater volume of exports has to be sold to finance a given amount of imported goods and services. The direction of change in the terms of trade is determined by the exchange rate and rate of inflation. Next is evaluation of the measure. The concept of net barter terms of trade is accepted as a useful device for measuring short term changes in trading positions. It also serves as an important index expressing the purchasing power of exports in paying for imports. However, the problem with this measure of terms of trade is that it ignores the quantum of trade and hence cannot reveal anything about the behavior of the balance of payment. Next is income terms of trade. The concept of net barter terms of trade has been improved by G.S. Dorrance who formulated the concept of income terms of trade. Income terms of trade refer to the ratio between the values of export to the import prices. In other words, income terms of trade are the net terms of trade multiplied by volume of exports. Symbolically, income terms of trade is equal to NBTT into QX is equal to PX into QX upon PM, where Q is equal to volume of exports and NBTT is equal to net barter terms of trade. Evaluation. The income terms of trade determines the volume of imports that a country can obtain with the export earnings and hence indicate nation's capacity to import. The concept of income terms of trade has two major drawbacks. First, the income terms of trade cannot indicate the country's total capacity to import. It indicates export-based capacity to import. The total capacity to import is a function of factors like unilateral payments, capital inflow receipts from invisibles and second. A change in the income terms of trade does not necessarily reflect the real gains accruing from trade. With falling export prices and constant import prices, the income terms of trade will improve. If the physical volume of exports increases, more than in proportion to the fall in export prices. Let us summarize our discussion so far. The justification for trade comes from the possibility of gains from trade. Gains from trade refer to the net benefits to nations arising from allowing increased trade with each other. Countries can reap the gains from trade by specializing in the production of that commodity in which it has comparative advantage and importing that commodity in which it has less comparative advantage, leading to international, I repeat, leading to international specialization of production. There can be different magnitudes of gains from trade depending upon the terms of trade fixed. It might be possible that one country is gainer and the other is not worse off and vice versa. But in all situations, there will be gains from trade. Foreign trade multiplier may be defined as the amount by which national income of a nation will be raised by a unit increase in domestic exports. It is based on a fundamental assumption which is the basis of operation of varied types of multiplier. The assumption relates to existence of unemployed resources in the economy. Smaller the leakages, that is, smaller the MPS and MPM, the greater the foreign trade multiplier and vice versa. Terms of trade from international trade perspective refer to terms of trade between two sectors of two different economies. If country A gets larger number units of a good for each unit of the other good sold to the other country B. The terms of trade will favor country A and vice versa. There are different measures of terms trade. The most commonly used are 
net barter terms of trade and income terms of trade. The ratio between the prices of exports and imports is called the net barter terms of trade. It is also called the commodity terms of trade. The concept of net barter terms of trade has been improved by G.S. Dorrance who formulated the concept of income terms of trade. Income terms of trade refer to the ratio between the value of exports to the import prices. Thank you.